Happy Halloween! Did you know that Halloween is a Scots word? It's a contraction of All Hallows Eve, also known as All Saints Night. Now a lot of Halloween traditions have roots in the Scottish and Celtic festivals of Samhain. Samhain means the end of summer. The word Sam for summer and Fuin for end of or the sunset of or eve of in Old Irish. Old Irish is the root language of both Irish and Scots Gaelic. There are loads of different Samhain traditions from all over the Celtic nations, many of which are celebrated today still. Now Halloween today is an amalgamation of a lot of different festivals and celebrations. It is a mix of the Samhain, All Saints Night or Michaelmas. In America Halloween has evolved from the original traditions that the Irish and Scottish immigrants brought with them and has mixed with a lot of the cultural melting pot that is America but also, crucially, capitalism. Now originally Samhain was a harvest festival. It falls at the end of the harvest season and the end of the slaughter and it would be used to use up any meat that wouldn't last, that couldn't be kept over winter such as blood sausages and haggis and any harvest that hadn't been pickled or jammed yet such as fresh berries, fresh apples, mushrooms, vegetables, nuts, all that sort of stuff. This would be the only time that the workers of a farm would be invited to the festivities, to the feast, and would be able to have fresh meat. Today Halloween is celebrated with dressing up as not only scary spirits and ghouls, but pirates, your favourite character, fairies, Originally, trick-or-treating comes from the Scots guising, meaning disguise, and originally were for the kids to disguise themselves from the spirits roaming about on Halloween. The kids would dress up and go door to door and be invited in and sing a little song, do a little trick, a joke, in return for apples, oranges, nuts, a little treat. These photos were taken in Uist in the 1930s by Margaret Fayshaw. She photographs the geysers on Halloween in their beautifully creepy costumes. Before the pop culture image of what a scary, spooky costume is, kids would dress up to disguise themselves from the spirits with masks, painted faces, oversized clothing, sheepskin, there's even a little boy who's carved out the skull of a sheep keeping the fur on to wear as his mask. So I may not have a sheep's head lying about, so instead I'm going to take inspiration from the other masks in the photograph, the slightly flatter, um, I'm not quite sure what they're made of, it could be either leather or card, probably just whatever they had lying about. I couldn't find any references to what the masks were made of. So I'm just going to use some leather offcuts that I've got lying about uh, and see if I can make that into some sort of spooky mask. I have this kind of mask base that I was going to use for a different project but then I found a nicer mask base because this one's actually a bit big and weird but I think it would work good to just kind of shape the leather because that obviously, I don't really have a space to do like a wet mold and I don't have a face to mold the wet mold on. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna use this as the base and feel it, see how it goes, vibe a bit, you know? Right, so I'm just gluing the paper mask to the leather and then trying to like 
manipulate the leather to like follow the shape of the mask. I'm thinking I don't want that big eyes on it. Just just little spooky eyes. I feel like maybe more. Kinda looks like skin. I mean, I guess it is skin. <laughs> this leather is actually some super old uh, offcuts from like years ago when I made some shoes, some uh, medieval shoes for a commission. Uh, I think they turned out quite nice. I'm quite happy with them. But yeah, I've never really <laughs> done this with leather. Usually I've actually used the techniques you're supposed to use and not super glue. <laughs> I actually started my uh, costuming journey in a Viking reenactment group. Uh, and one of the first things I actually made was shoes. Um, I went to Vispi. Um, yeah, I went to a, a shoe making course there. That was really cool. Uh, and then uh, I also made my own dress uh, really badly, but I didn't make it. <laughs> So it's like kind of nice to be using, using the old things a bit, a little bit spooky, a little bit nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, I'm just using these coffee stirs to like hold down the paper mask to the leather, just because my little my little guys don't reach all the way. So using the sticks, basically, I can clamp clamp them together without clamping them together. You know. Make it, make it stick. <laughs> Good thing about super glue is that it dries almost instantly. <laughs> so I'm trying to just like clean up the the edges here. Um, it's a little bit difficult because obviously it's a 3D shape. I'm trying to like clean it up without um, ruining the 3D shape. <laughs> For the rest of my costume, I am recreating this bodice that I made for my Coastal Museum video because I thought it would look really nice as a early 20th century guising costume. I only had a tiny bit of scraps left over from that project, so this piece is very pieced. Which, you know, is very period, but it <laughs> I had to do a lot of, a lot of piecing. Um, as I didn't have much fabric left. And I also made a linen skirt, just kind of a nice, simple uh, pleated skirt so that I had, you know, a nice outfit for my creepy Halloween mask to go with. I'm trying my best to use as much as the whole cloth as I can, but I, I'm going to have to, like for example here, do a little piecing. I think for the under 
side of the sleeves as well. I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of piecing, but that's okay. We're just using up some leftovers. The lining also used to be a different costume. Um, so there's some holes in it from distressing, but you know, it's on the inside, it's fine. It's for Halloween. Scotland has many Halloween traditions, and quite a fair few of them involve fortune telling, such as a couple would put two nuts in the fire. If they burnt peacefully, the marriage would be a peaceful one. If they crackled and popped and jumped out of the fire, the marriage would be a turbulent one. Apple dicking is another popular tradition in Scotland where you stick your head in a bucket of water and you try to catch an apple with just your mouth. Victorious! I was planning on being like, and then just take one gracefully, immediately, which is harder than it looks. <laughs> Originally, uh, jack-o'-lanterns were carved out of turnips rather than pumpkins as they are today. That is because when the traditions of carving turnips started, they didn't know what pumpkins were uh, because pumpkins are an American fruit, vegetable, uh, and turnips is a European one. However, when they got to America, I uh, realized pumpkins were much easier to carve <laughs> because turnips are just a solid rock. I'm gonna try and make a little lantern out of a turnip this is the biggest one I could find. They had one bigger, but they had cut it in half. And I was like, this ship marker has cut off the top and bottom, which is really annoying because I wanted those. So I did buy a smaller, this is a, a Swede, a Swede neep, and this is just a normal neep. Um, these are bigger. So I'm just gonna steal the top off of this guy so that we can get a nice little lid. Uh, just because this one has been cut. There are many origin stories to what the jack-o'-lanterns are. Jack-o'-lanterns is another word for will-o'-the-wisps, which you might have heard of is leading people astray on the marshes. Now, will-o'-the-wisps might actually be a real phenomenon. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but uh, scientists say it is a buildup of gases in the peat, in the bog. And sometimes when they release, they spontaneously combust, which is just super cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting this sharp knife and I think first off I'm gonna try and get the kind of top bit off um, so that I can kind of access it more easy. Like the inside. Ugh. But yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> Oh, 
right. I think I could fit a candle in there. Something like that. I'm gonna steal this guy's hat. Make him as big as I can first. And then see how it <laughs> Why is this one harder? Sir. Sir. <laughs> it's kind of oval shaped. 